USA Radio News with Jason Wirt. They always start with, I'm embarrassed to say this to you, Mr. Trump, but I haven't voted for in 50 years. And I'm coming out and I'm voting for your father because I believe he's going to change the country. And I believe we don't need another career politician in, in, in the Oval Office. Eric Trump on ABC's This Week saying he's had people across the country come out and say they're going to be voting for his father when they've never voted for a Republican in the past. Donald Trump on the campaign trail saying President Obama and Hillary Clinton have betrayed freedom-loving people around the world. Standing up against the oppression of the Castro regime in Cuba and standing in solidarity with freedom-loving people in Venezuela. A Senate antitrust committee says they will hold a hearing on AT&T's plans to buy Time Warner as both Democrats and Republicans are raising questions about the $85 billion deal, one of the biggest bergers in American history. USA Radio News. The National Transportation Safety Board on site of a deadly bus crash in California. Here's Chris Barnes. Thirteen people were killed and dozens more injured early yesterday morning in California when on Interstate 10. A 1996 MCI passenger bus transporting 44 passengers struck the rear of a Freightliner truck with a trailer. That's California Highway Patrol Chief Jim Abley. They were coming from the Red Earth Casino near the Sultan Sea. And they were headed back to Los Angeles. The driver of the bus was among the dead. The driver of the truck survived and may be able to shed some light on what may have happened. Currently, they say there were no known mechanical problems with that bus, which had recently passed inspection. I'm Chris Barnes. A rare event in the National Football League last night as they had their first tie since October of 2014. The game between the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals was in a 6-6 tie. They went to overtime and both missed game-winning field goal attempts in the closing minutes. USA Radio News. President Obama having a secret fundraiser for Hillary Clinton in California. Here's Jason Campadonia. Officials at the White House say President Obama landed at Marine Corps Air Station Miramar last night and will speak at a Hillary Victory Fund reception later today. The location of the event has not been released. The event reportedly will be limited to 45 attendees and cost $10,000 per person or $33,000 per couple. The president's last trip to San Diego was about a year ago when he spent just over two days in Rancho Santa Fe and played a couple of rounds of golf. Jason Campadonia, San Diego. A major leader in the liberal political movement in the 60s and 70s and in California in later years has died. Here's correspondent Chris Barnes with the story of Tom Hayden. Tom Hayden's wife, Barbara Williams, says Hayden died yesterday at 76 in Santa Monica following a long, unspecified illness. Hayden was first known as a 1960s anti-war protester who was married to fellow activist and actress Jane Fonda from 1973 to 1990. Hayden was also one of the so-called Chicago Seven, tried for conspiracy after protests at the Democratic National Convention in 1968. He served terms in the California State Assembly and the State Senate against Tom Hayden was 76. I'm Chris Barnes. Day 7 of the testimony in the Rolling Stone defamation trial set to resume today. A former University of Virginia associate dean suing Rolling Stone, saying they've unfairly portrayed her as indifferent to a rape victim. USA Radio News. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Frank Vetro Show. Monday. What is it, anyway? It's Monday, September, October. Jeez, I'm in the wrong day, wrong month. Monday, October 24th, 2016. About two weeks till perhaps the end of the world. The next president of the United States will be crowned. Oh, God. I ju- I'm really going to be, I'm really, really, I'm so vested. Like, not, like no other election. Um... I'm not even really into politics that much until this election. I'm so vested in I'm going to be destroyed if Hillary loses. Not because I'm going to have to buy my buddy a steak dinner at Peter Luger's Steakhouse right over here in Brooklyn, New York, but just 
the thought of having Hillary Clinton after, I mean, it's just when things are just so clear to me, it's almost like, what am I missing? But nobody has told me what I'm missing yet. It's so obvious to me what's going on and how corrupt Hillary is and how everybody really is just piling on and ganging up because they don't want Donald Trump that it's so obvious to me that I'm almost, I'm waiting for somebody to wake me up. Like, what is it that I'm missing? And I've asked, and nobody has convinced me yet of what I'm missing, so I must not be missing anything. Is it that bad out there? Is the world that ignorant? Um, or is everybody just sleeping? Is everybody just not saying what they're really going to do? I guess I could use scare tactics. I could say, hey, listen, uh, get the vote out. Get the vote out. Donald Trump needs to win the st certain states. He needs to win. He needs to get out there. We're down. We're behind. And I could run through a list of states that I need to urge people to get the vote. Get out there. Do it. You have to do it. Listen, it's an uphill battle. It's been an uphill battle. We knew that from day one. You know, the, with, with regards to the Electoral College, the Democrats naturally, every election, have the edge. So it's always an uphill battle. And it was especially one... It was especially one uh, with Donald Trump. Obviously, we know he was behind the eight ball from the start. He was taking on fellow Republicans, 16 seasoned politicians. He was not supposed to win from the day he announced he was a clown. He was this. He was going to fail. And then the establishment didn't want him. They tried everything, the establishment, the fellow Republicans, not to have him win the primaries. So did the media. They were all against him. And now... Like no, other, like nothing else. The Democrats, the, the the media, the his own his own party. It's just the world against him. And hey, listen, I don't want to uh, paint the doom and gloom picture, but you know I, I have hope. I think that that things are going to happen, and uh, and I do believe that he can win, and and he is going to win. But that doesn't mean we sit on our hands. Still, everybody, I urge you in every state that you're listening to me from, everywhere, get out there and vote. You still have to vote. I don't care if your state historically, if Donald Trump has no chance of winning in your state. Hey, man, listen, I'm in New York. New York is as liberal as they come. I'm voting Donald Trump. Okay? Just get out there. Vote. Do it to it, man. You have to vote. I'm I'm petrified of what could happen. I, I I tell you right now. Two weeks. You know Donald Trump had a had what I consider a great speech. Uh, was it Saturday? Listed what he would do. The list of things he would do. In his first hundred days of presidency as president, I thought it was great. I thought he was doing great things. You know I could rattle off a list right here. I only have an hour in the show uh, of everything he planned to do, and I was like, great. That's great. That's great. And he did throw in the fact that when he started his pre when you know during his first days of president, he would sue the women that came forward. And of course, of all the great things that he said during his speech, of what he would do in the early days of his presidency, his to-do list, all the great things, the media, the Democrats, they focused on one thing. All of them focused on one thing. That he said... They, you know, they spun it out of control like they always do. Donald Trump is going to spend his days as president suing the women. First of all, the attorneys do that, not him. Okay? He'll probably spend no time doing that. His attorneys will do it for him. That's first of all. Second of all, I'm glad he's going to do that. He should sue the hell out of those women. And bury them. Run them into the ground. Bury every one of those women that came out with absolutely no evidence and wanted to run them into the ground because it worked, unfortunately. It worked. And there was damage. And he should sue them and he should win. And at the very least, because he's a billionaire, he should sue them and continue to sue them and drag it out for years and years and at the very least, make their lives miserable for saying what they said and for doing what they did. It's not right. So now they should live years of misery. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't care. Fine. Frank Vetro's mean. Good. So the media continues. 
today and uh, and yesterday, and they put out um, one uh, major uh, mainstream media outlet puts out a, a release of why they endorse Hillary Clinton for president, a full page. And then another full page of how they how Trump should not be president. So let me run down what this uh, media is uh, is doing. Get a load of this crap, everybody. Get a load of this crap. And you, by the way, you listen to the Frank Vetro show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, four thirty, right here on WLIny dot com. Speaking, uh, talking about a little bit of politics. For more about me, what I do. Uh, the book I wrote, Standing on Principle, How I Fight Corruption Every Day. Um, let's go to frankvetro.com, frankvetro.com. The book's been uh, been doing great. I appreciate everybody's support buying the book. Uh, I, I recommend it to every. I really do recommend this book to everybody, especially high school students, because if everybody read my book, they would not be falling victim to this media nonsense. That's first of all. They would not be falling victim to this media nonsense. Nonsense and how they're smearing Donald Trump. Anyway, speaking of smearing Donald Trump, let me list you why the media says Donald Trump can't be president. They already admitted there's no bias here, everybody. The media at this media, well, first of all, most major media outlets, high nineties, you know, percentile, already endorsed Hillary Clinton. They spent all their money, 96% of the campaign finances that have gone uh, uh, that have gone to campaigns, I should say, the media has spent on the Democrat side, not Donald. Um, they endorse Hillary. So there's no bias here. Is there everybody? No, of course not. So here's why. Donald Trump said terrible things. I'm not kidding. Donald Trump said terrible things. And it is disheartening that some of his most vehement supporters, might as well put Frank Vetro, just say Frank Vetro, seem to be more attracted to his travesties than his truths. How dare they speak about truth when comparing Donald to Hillary Clinton? He says terrible things. And they go down a list. They go down a list. He kicked off his campaign by saying Mexico sends us rapists and drug dealers. You know, he didn't exactly say it like that. First of all, first of all, um, has a drug dealer or a rapist ever come out of Mexico? The answer is yes. He never said they all are. He never said they all are. But, don't, you know, the media is not going to slant this now, are they? His degradations of women are revolting to hear and impossible to explain away. No, they're quite possible. His presumptions that Muslims are dangerous and that all black people live in crime-ridden neighborhoods and have no jobs are ignorant and bizarre. I could bet my life that Donald Trump doesn't think all black people live in crime-ridden neighborhoods. I'm sure Donald Trump doesn't think Oprah Winfrey lives in a crime-ridden area. Or Dr. Ben Carson, one of his supporters, lives in a crime-ridden neighborhood. So if the media wants to get technical, and we can break this article down just as technical as they try to break Donald Trump down. Because everybody clings to his exact words all the time. So let's do this to the media. Do you really think Donald Trump thinks Michael Jordan... Tiger Woods live in crime-ridden areas? I think not, media, but paint that broad picture. Use that broad brush to paint the picture of Donald Trump. It's what you've been doing from day one. Trump flouted crucial traditions, crucial traditions, like the release of tax returns by nominees. How about the fact that you guys published stolen tax forms? I'm sure Donald Trump didn't hand them over to you, but you published them. And rather that he hoped for and rather than the hoped for pivot to an acceptable general election campaign after the primaries, Trump began cynically attacking and questioning our treasured institutions, the rights of a free press and freedom of religion. And pay attention to that everybody, the rights of a free press. And the press has without question overstepped its bounds during this election process with its one-sided stories. You know, nine minutes towards Trump saying saying bad things to about women and nothing, 30 seconds toward Hillary's criminal actions. Day in, day out, night in, night out on the news. 
in the media, written, nothing being, nothing. The media, media just burying it. All of Hillary's misdeeds. And it's because Donald Trump, well, in part because Donald Trump vowed about a year ago, a little more than a year ago now, that he would seek to make it easier to sue the media. Well, the media doesn't want any part of that. The media wants free reign to just rip people to shreds without any consequences. And don't tell me the media can be sued because it's, it's damn near impossible. I'm not saying they can't be sued. Obviously, Rolling Stone's in the middle of a lawsuit right now because they morons over there put in a story about a fake rape case because they believe the woman. So we know it can be done, but damn it, it is just so difficult. So difficult. He questioned the right of free press and freedom of religion, the judicial system, and the credibility of the FBI. You're damn right, the FBI. Everybody's questioning the FBI. Where's the FBI right now investigating the Democratic campaign? Admitting to inciting riots. And teaching people how to show up to Donald Trump rallies and incite riots. You're damn right. Everybody, there's a, there's a lot of people questioning this right now. Not just Donald Trump. He claimed an unfounded fear of fake votes. No, dead people have been on ballots before, as have illegals. So what are you talking about? And a rigged election that could be heard by his most vivid fans as a justification for election day vigilantism. It's just more insults that we're just nothing but no good bastards. We're just deplorable. And the media is just feeding into that. These are his reasons. This is, this is the media's reason that Trump should not be president. All nonsense. All lie. All just total just, just the land of make-believe. And it's very frustrating. Unfounded fear of favor? No, very founded. What's unfounded is the big time, the big time story press releases that that the media that you guys have put forth regarding women and Donald Trump groping them. When has that ever been founded? When has one iota of proof been set forth? That's what's unfounded. That is what's unfounded. But you did it. And as far as him, not saying he will uh, gladly accept the election results, why should he? Why should he say right now that he will accept the election results? What idiot would do that? I wouldn't accept, uh, as of right now, I don't accept the election results. I think it is rigged, and I don't accept. When, after the election happens, everything lines up the right way, then I'll say, okay, Donald Trump lost. I don't accept it right now. I think it is rigged. I think the media has been, I know, I don't think, I know the media has been big time slanted in favor of Hillary. Everybody knows it. You endor You admitted to endorsing Hillary. Of course you're going to do that. You donate money to the Democratic campaign. Of course you want your money well spent, don't you? It's been shown in documents that you're in cahoots with Hillary. It's a slanted campaign. It is. The whole process is rigged. It is. Donald Trump is onto something. And that's why you don't want him in. But even better. Even better. Or worse. Uh, you know, however you want to look at it. Why should Hillary Clinton be president? Here's the, so listen to what I just said, what they said about Donald Trump. Now look what they say about Hillary. Against the back, the backdrop of uncertainty in this presidential election year, Americans have made, have made it clear they want change. Real change. Exactly. We don't want an extension of President Obama. You get that by electing someone with decades of public service. Decades of public service. Meanwhile, when I asked for the past three, four months now, everybody, 
anybody who want to listen to my question, what has Hillary Clinton done? Nobody has answered me. Not one thing. A lot of fluff, a lot of resume stuff. Someone who has a laudable goals and will work relentlessly to achieve them and even break the law to misguide America and to lie to America and pull the wool of America's eyes. Don't forget that, media. We'll work with anyone who wants to get things done. We haven't had a president enter office with that kind of resume in a long time. I'll give him that much. No, we have not had a president enter the White House with Hillary Clinton's resume of misconduct and doing absolutely nothing in like forever. She takes the cake. So that's I'll agree with that. That's why the nation should elect Hillary Clinton as president. And look at this crap. They try to seem like they're not biased. We do not make this pronouncement lightly. In fairness to both candidates and their supporters, we waited until all three debates were held before making our recommendation. No, you didn't. I mean, Jesus, this very news, this very outlet took out a full page ad months ago stating how they endorsed Hillary Clinton. So what are they talking about? In a campaign that keeps getting uglier, it's easy to forget the skills Clinton would bring to the Oval Office. What skills? She is steady, mature, tough, intelligent, a liar. Oh, they didn't say that. I'm sorry. And deeply knowledgeable about policy and government. Take Obamacare. Oh, my God. Clinton understands that revamping it makes more sense than starting over. Oh, my God. So she's proposing tax credits and more subsidies to make it more affordable. Years earlier. Now, look into this, everybody. Do your own homework, please. Do your own homework. Years earlier, when she was first lady and didn't get her health care overhaul approved. She worked on a proposal to expand health insurance for low-income children that now covers more than 8 million kids. You might want to fact-check that, everybody. I'm no expert. I swear to you, I'm no expert. But you might, you might want to look into Edward Kennedy. I think he, I really believe he was the driving force behind that. And that's the problem with the media. They throw things out there. They throw things out there and they just... You know, scandal on Donald Trump and boom, it's out there. But for Hillary, because of the lies and because the media covers it up, you really have to do your own digging for information. And that's what nobody, that's what none of this American citizens want to do. So they don't learn the truth. They just hear what the media says about Donald Trump and they don't hear anything about Hillary because it's all covered up. So you got to do your homework and nobody does that. Do yourself a favor. The media is saying that Hillary Clinton should take credit for the proposal that expanded health care insurance for low-income children that covers more than 8 million kids right now. She's this great advocate, and she did all this for the kids. You might want to look into that, because I believe, and tell me if I'm wrong, I believe that Edward Kennedy was the driving force behind that. Don't take my word for it. Please don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Serious. Well, what else did she do? She got legislation passed that provided for monitoring the long-term health of 9-11 responders, and that made National Guard members and reserves eligible for military president. Again, you might want to look into that, everybody. I think she did start that, and it didn't really get anywhere. That wasn't passed until long after she left office. Don't take my word for it. Again. I never claim to be a know-it-all. Look it up yourself. I think they're misleading you here. I really believe that. Do some homework because I'm going to do some homework. Somebody else finished what she started there. She couldn't get it done. She didn't get it done. She didn't complete her project. That passed after she left. goes on and on her use of a private server for emails was a mistake she did not readily acknowledge it was not a crime oh no it is a crime although James Comey who should be handcuffed too did not recommend charges filed against her it's a crime 
Make no mistake. She was busted. She lied. And she lied about it. You know, she, she got rid of emails. The whole nine yards. It's a freaking crime. People were prosecuted for less. And if me or any one of my listeners out there would did the same thing, don't worry about it. You'd be arrested and locked up real freaking quick. Don't worry about that. Oh, it's a crime. Her Clinton Foundation, no favor donate, no favor donation and quid pro quo has has been documented. What the hell are you talking about? It has been documented. It's out there. There's evidence. WikiLeaks, okay? WikiLeaks. Julian Assange. It is out there. You just don't want to recognize it. But make no mistake. That's what Clinton does. There is quid. There is quid pro quo. There is pay to play. It is going on. The media doesn't want to freaking report it. Look what they're doing. Look at this. This is right. I'm reading this right from the media. Mainstream media. Her charity does good work. And no favor for donation. Quid pro quo has been documented. Really? How about the King of Morocco? $12 million. And then this. Then they go on again. Trump's stunning refusal Wednesday night. To say he will accept the result of the election undermines one of the hallmarks of our democracy. Undermines our democracy. The fact that he wants to wait until he sees the end product to tell you whether or not he thinks it's okay. Shame on him. When, when everybody out there buys a house, you want to see the house first, right? Hey, you want to buy this house, Johnny? Jenny Jones? Oh yeah, I'll buy it. I already want to look at it, everybody. Yeah, just 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 go buy it. Yeah, no problem. Let me. Where do I sign? Is that how Hillary's going to do business? Is that how politicians do business? Hey, I'll sign that nuclear treaty. Sure, I don't have to read the contract. Don't even show me the contract. I approve. I approve. Is that how things get done in the government? Idiots. All he said was, I'll wait and see. Common sense. That's the answer I expect. That's the answer I want. I don't want him saying, yeah, I would have lost respect for Donald Trump if he said, yeah, I will uh, accept the results. Why will he accept the results? There is absolutely no reason. And there's no reason for Hillary to say she would accept the results for that matter. Why? I will wait until it's done. That's what it's his right. I mean, what is going on with this? But that's what the media does. That's what the media does. Speaking of the uh, king of Morocco and his no pay to play and his $12 million donation. Did anybody catch Chris Wallace, his interview of uh, Robbie Mook? On the WikiLeaks. So, Robbie Mook, Robbie Mook the uh, campaign uh, campaign manager, uh, was interviewed. And check this out. Look at how I, lo- I I wish the rest of the media did what Chris Wallace does. Because if the rest of the media did to the H- Hillary Clinton and her campaign, what Chris Wallace did to Robbie Mook. And press them, then everybody would see these people for what they are. They pivot, they sidestep, they will not answer a question. So it goes something like this. When he's asked about the pay-to-play scheme with the King of Morocco and the $12 million donation to Hillary Clinton, Robbie Mook says, well, these, these are stolen regarding the emails, the documents. These are stolen documents. Stolen by the Russians. It's now confirmed from John Podesta that are being put out for this purpose. Russia is just undermining everything. So Chris Wallace says, you know, can I speak to that? You know, the Trump tax returns were stolen as well. Good point, Mr. Wallace. The Trump tax returns were stolen as well. They were mailed to the New York Times. You guys didn't object to that. Excellent point. Nobody jumped on that. Those were stolen. 
In fact, you jumped all over the fact that the what 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 was out there. Mook responds, "Well, we don't know the, where those tax returns came from." Chris Wallace says, "Well, they were clearly stolen." Mook, we don't know that. Chris Wallace says, "Do you think Trump gave it to them?" He should have ended that with, "You stupid moron." I guess, so Wallace continues, I guess that's what I'm saying. If we're looking at the fruits of that theft, and I will call it a theft, it's fair to look at the fruits of your theft. Right. If you're going to say, well, those emails and those documents were stolen, then why didn't you say that about the Donald Trump tax returns instead of ripping into Donald Trump for that? You should have stood by Donald You should have defended Donald Trump. You should have never acknowledged it. You should have said, well, they're stolen too. But no, they don't do that. Campaign manager Mook says, well, I think I think what's particularly disturbing in this situation is that the intelligence community has now confirmed that John Podesta's emails and the DNC emails were stolen by the Russians. We already established that, Mr. Mook. And Wallace says that he goes, I know about the Russian connection. That's not the issue here, though. I'm talking about the $12 million. Forget the fact that they're stolen. Fine and good. We know they're hacked. We know they're stolen. We know Julian Assange is a crook. We understand. But I'm talking about the $12 million from the King of Morocco and the fact that this continues to sort of show the line between private and public and Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. He never responds, though. He sidesteps. He pivots. Mook. Campaign manager. I think we got to look at what decisions were made. There was a meeting in Morocco. Chris Wallace. But then Bill Clinton and Chelsea Chelsea Clinton went, correct? Mook. My understanding is they did go, but she did not. Again, and then he he keeps sidestepping. Again, this is the discussion the Russians want us to be having. They stole this information. They're selectively leaking. I can't even verify the information you have there. We simply don't have enough time as a campaign. Wallace, smartly, half sarcastic, but all true, says, I promise you, if these emails weren't true, you'd tell us. He never said the emails weren't true. He never addressed the question or the situation regarding the pay-to-play, the $12 million from the King of Morocco. But he did sidestep, and all he could say was they're stolen. We don't care that they're stolen. Fine. But it's still the truth. You're busted. Somebody stole it, but now you're busted. Please address it, and he can't. And Mook goes on. Again, this is a distraction put in place by the Russian government. Fine. No problem. Fine. But it's still true. It's still true. Now address the pay to play. They can't, everybody. Please, if you haven't seen this, look at it. Go to it's, it's online. Look at the Chris Wallace interview. Okay? Of Robbie Mook, campaign manager for, for, for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton. It illustrates, and this can be done if anybody, CNN, CNN, MSNBC, anybody, anybody, even Fox News in some sense, a conservative station, but they, you know, they've been going a little bit easy too. Any news outlet does what Chris Wallace did on any issue, on any topic, and this is what they do. They don't Answer, when Hillary Clinton was aboard her plane with her running mate, she was asked about the emails. Does she want to answer? She flat out said, no, I don't want to answer. I don't want to answer. And she didn't. Now, the reporter should have pressed on, but she didn't. They will not answer. And they're let off the hook every single time. And it's nonsense. All right, everybody, you listen to Frank Vetro. This is the Frank Vetro Show. I'm on every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4.30, right here on WLINY.com. Long Island, New York, the world.
Thanks for hopping on the V train. We're going to pay, pay a little bills right now. We'll be back right after this quick commercial break. Hey guys, it's Eric from Cop and Calamity in the morning. Let me talk to you for just a second about Harlequin Capital Corp. See, when you're shopping for a mortgage for either buying a home or refinancing your home, you don't want to deal with a company that's going to string you along day after day only to find out when it's all the dust settles and you hit that closing table that what they promise is not what's there. Nope, that's not Harlequin Capital Corp. See, they have integrity in closing. They know the mortgage business. They know their products and they know what they have to do to ensure that you get the best mortgage at the best rate and a rate you can afford. They know their stuff. Harlequin Capital Corp. 888-815-1120. 888-815-1120. One more time. 888-815-1120. Call Harlequin Capital Corp. for all of your mortgage and refinancing needs today. They know their business. And that's what you need to know. Harlequin Capital Corp. 888-815-1120. 888-815-1120. Give them a call today. An extraordinary story of a real-life David versus Goliath is told as Frank Vetro, a young charismatic principal on the rise of the educational system, has his life taken away like you won't believe. In Standing on Principle, Vetro provides a first-hand account in real time of an innocent man in the justice system and details the tedious struggle to clear his name. You will never hear another story like it. It broadens from local themes right here on Long Island to global themes of social political importance. Learn the struggles of Frank Vetro as a career was lost, as well as employment and his home. For more information about the book, go to frankvetro.com. Showmecountry.com. It's not just a brand, it's a... Um, hello? Wait, what do you mean? We're not doing it this way? Stop it. No, we're not. All right, fine. Showmecountry.com. Express your country with great products like purses, hats, shirts, belt buckles, purses, wallets, novelties, and gifts. We have something for everyone. Hundreds of products, adding new deals daily. Their site is 100% safe and secure. Easy payment options like login with Amazon, PayPal, or credit debit cards. Country means something different to everyone. Show off your country style with showmecountry.com. Not country? Check, Check us, us out, out anyway. anyway. Custom orders welcome. Showmecountry.com. It's, it's not, not just, just country, country, it's, it's a, a lifestyle. lifestyle. So check out our buddies at showmecountry.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Frank Vetro Show. I'm an author educator. Uh, I fight corruption. That's my main thing for those of you that are new listeners. And, um, all right, one of the things I do, like I just said, I fight corruption. So let me just clean up some stuff around here that, that I've been uh, very vocal about. And one of them is um, Suffolk County, right where I live, Suffolk County, Long Island, the district attorney's office. Probably the most corrupt I, I don't say that lightly I, I stand by what I, what I'm saying right now the most corrupt district attorney's office in the nation I'm gonna say that I think that they do more things wrong there is more prosecutorial misconduct going on they did it to me they ran me into the ground I was living in my car because of it I fought back wrote a book about it they are more corrupt Thomas Spoda you hear me Tommy you hear me? You should be in handcuffs too. You, with Hillary Clinton, you should all be in handcuffs. Thomas Spoda, the most corrupt district attorney there is. All right. So anyway, one of his uh, one of his henchmen, John Scott Prudenti, pretty powerful figure. Family members were judges, the whole nine yards. So he rents a party boat, and he was renting the boat to defense attorneys that he was copying deals with. He was making plea deals with. Oh, that's not a uh, conflict of interest, is it? So they want to hide that. The county doesn't want to release that. 
finally, a judge says, you know what? We're entitled to see the financial records for the past 15 years of this man and his party boat. And it wasn't only, it was not just defense attorneys on the boat. There were judges, prosecutors. Yeah, there were pictures. There's pictures of these people on the boat. It happened. So I can't wait to see these financials. They're going to, now certain parts of these are going to be redacted. Um, and I fear, call me, uh, you know, Donald Trump. No problem. I think that that might be doctored up. I think we might be redacting things that shouldn't be redacted, that we need to know as a public. The fix is always in in Suffolk County. Don't worry about that. So I can't wait to see after this stuff is redacted what's on these financial disclosures. Ten of the largest pensions in New York State are for school superintendents. Now, I'm going to back up school superintendents for just a second here. I'm actually going to go to bat for them, even though none of them will hire me and I'm blacklisted from public education. I'm still going to go to bat for them. I think that whenever there's somebody in charge of 5,000 people, 8,000 people, where they are the last stop, think about a business. The person that's in charge of 5,000 people is making a lot of money, okay? So when they're making $250,000, $300,000 a year, I'm not that much against it. Not like the next person, at least, because they're in charge. Ultimately, they're the last stop for all those people. Having said that, this whole pension nonsense, and there is reform that hopefully will trim it down. But, you know, this whole thing with pensions, like these superintendents are retiring with some pretty... I mean, hefty packages. So I'm talking about $25,000 a month, $28,000 a month, and pension for the rest of their life. And that's the problem. See, when these pensions were, were thought of, you know, people weren't living. Number one thing is people weren't living as long as they live now. I mean, you could have somebody retiring when they're 60 years old, 55 years old, an educator, any educator, teacher. And they're going to collect a pension for the rest of their life. Now, school districts have to have to pay for some of that pension every year. So this person could live another 30 years. 55, they're 85. What if they're 90 years old collecting a pension 35 years later? 40 years later, retire when they're 55. They could be retired collecting a, and collecting a pension for more years than they were actually working. That's how far removed they'll be from the school district because people live so so much longer now. And they're paying. And that adds to the increased taxes. That's just one thing. And we got into it, but you know, ten of the largest pensions in New York State, public pensions, are school superintendents. They're getting paid money out here. Uh, again, I'm not necessarily against it, not as much as the next person. I just don't like when they complain about their job and how it's too hard and now they have to do this. You're getting paid a lot of money. Do your freaking job and keep your mouth shut. Collect your little paycheck. That goes for teachers too. You're going to do just fine at the end of the day. Stop crying. Nobody likes crybabies. You're doing fine. The rest of America isn't. You're doing just fine. Get a nice little paycheck. Get your summers off. Get all the other time. Fine. Fine. Take it. Believe me. Take it. I won't knock you, but don't you damn complain. Don't you dare let me hear you bitch and moan. And that's what I don't like, and it happens all too often. You're doing just fine out there. You're doing just fine out there. All right, so I have a listener, and she emailed me, as I recommend to everybody. If you guys want to hear a certain topic, or you don't like me, or you do like me, or you don't like how I speak about something, and you, or you think I'm wrong, and you want to tell me privately, do it. A lot of people do. And I recommend it. Go to my website, frankvetro.com. There's a contact page, and do it. There's a lot of people that do it. I don't say all of them on air. Sometimes I do. I, sometimes I respect. If they, if they speak to me respectfully, I won't call them out on air. I don't. Um, and I answer all my emails personally. And respond as Christine, I won't say her full name, can vouch for. She reached out to me just today, actually. Um, and thank you, Christine. She um, said some nice things about me and my show. She listens to all of them. And she said that, you know, she brings up a good point. Christine says, listen, 
Well, anyway, I'm going to piggyback off of Christine. You no, know, with all these hacked emails all over the place and the federal government getting hacked on, what about us? We should be worried. Like, isn't that a troublesome? Forget the election. But there are people that really know how to hack into things. And, and you listen, know, nothing is safe. Everything, you know, is more and more computers, cell phones, iPads. It's all internet. And because of that, and with the social media, it allows Big Brother and perhaps even worse, bad people, like terrorists. Well, you don't think terrorists can hack into things? It allows them access to our lives. And here's one thing that people aren't considering. And Christine brought it up today, and she wanted me to look into this because it, it has happened already. And this is the next step for terrorists. And Christine, I want you to know, number one, thank you again. Number two, I did speak about this about three or four months ago, maybe a little more, because something happened in upstate New York regarding this. Think about everything that's controlled electronically by computers. I mean, there are bridges that are run by computers. Dams. Computers. All right? Electrical supply. Power supplies. Computers. All right, power grids, our internet, our water supply. Now think about it. If you don't think for a second, if everybody doesn't realize that the terrorists, these terrorists are plotting, they're planning, they've been doing, listen, they wait years. Years. That's why every time you hear something go wrong, you, you hear people speak about, you know, oh, what a nice person. I can't believe it was that person. Of course you don't. They want to fool us. They are. They could be your neighbor. They could be anywhere. They, who knows? They could be your friend. That's part of their plan to fit in. And they scheme and they wait and they perfect the plan so it's perfect. What if, just what if, they hack in, they do something bad. They hack into our computers. They hack into our internet that's controlling important things like our water supply, our power grids, our dams, our bridges. No escape. Our bridges. The toll bridge, it's up. It won't go down. I'm just saying. The gridlock that would ensue, the panic. What if they drop something into the water supply? They're working on it. That's the, the, Don't think they're not working on it. They want mass destruction. They want to kill as many as possible. They don't want to slash you. They don't want to shoot one person. They don't want to just rob somebody of money. They want mass destruction of the United States. And if all of this lines up with everything else they do with bombs and explosives, put it all together like they want to do, and what do you get? We'll look like 1960 Cuba. We'll look like like a Middle Eastern country. We'll look like a third world nation. Christine brings up a very good point, and I did speak about this briefly some months ago. And I'm going to look into this more. It did happen, actually, in upstate New York. Something, but nothing really came of it, but something went wrong. Something was hacked into. It's happening, everybody. It's happening. No question about it. Thank you again, Christine. All right. Now, you know, Trump actually, Donald Trump, back to politics. Donald Trump brought up a good point. Donald Trump says, listen, if this could happen to me with the media and the trashing and undermining and the cover up and the corrupt action and how they're in cahoots with each other. With the media and the Democrats and other world nations and the FBI involved. If they could do all this to conspire against Donald Trump, and I don't want to hear that they're not. I mean, there are documents that are saying this. And like Chris Wallace said to Robert Mook, one of Hillary's campaign managers. If they were wrong, I'm sure you would say it. They never say they're wrong. They just say they're stolen. They avoid it. So with all of this, Donald Trump says, if they can do this to a multi-billionaire who has resources and hundreds and hundreds of people working for him to uncover things and money and a 
support of millions of Americans all behind them. And there's a movement behind Donald Trump. And they can still do this to him and corruptly oppress him and, and just undermine him and undermine the campaign. If the government can do this to somebody like Donald Trump, let me ask everybody a question out there. What do you think the government can do and has done to you without you knowing about it? They beat your ass into the ground and you don't even know what happened to you. Well, it happened to me on a very low level. Right here in Suffolk County, Long Island, they did it to me. The media and the local government, they did it. Elected officials did it. They all conspired and they did in Frank Virtual beginning back in 2006. And there was about a, mm, I would say, three, about a seven-year plan. For seven years, they ran me into the ground to the point where I was living in my car. I'm sorry, I said seven years. About five years. Five years. And then I slowly fought my way back when I uncovered everything they were doing. See, what they're doing to Donald Trump is nothing new. It's just the largest level that we've ever seen exposed. It's worse than everybody ever could imagine. But if you read my book, if you read Standing on Principle, they did it to Frank Vetro. It is a fact, just on a much smaller level. And when I said what was being done, when I uncovered it, everybody thought I was nuts. No, it happens. It happens. You just can't, you just don't know. The common person can't figure it out because they don't have the resources to figure it out. Like my own attorney said back in 2008 when that shyster turned his back on me. And I'm not talking about my attorney now, Phil Giacino. Like my attorney said back then, he said, Frank, you don't have the resources to fight them. We don't have the resources, people, so the corrupt government goes on and on. And nobody wants to believe it. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Donald Trump is crazy. He's crazy. No, he's not. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. We just don't have the resources to uncover it. Donald Trump does. He's a global figure. He has more money and enough money to uncover things and fight them and outlast them. He is a fighter. They're not going to outlast them. He could ultimately lose the election, but he still can uncover more and more things. He has the resources. Win or lose, we should thank Donald Trump for what he uncovered. Win or lose. If they can do this to Donald Trump, what do you think they do to us? The government and the media, and when they get in, and when when they're in bed together, like they are, they can bury anything, and they do bury it. There's cover up every freaking day. There's pay to play every freaking day. It's been going on for decades and decades and decades, but nobody wants to listen because when you speak out against it, you're nuts. Now, Donald Trump is crazy. This is fixed. This is rigged. It's a conspiracy. But he's right. It happens all the time, people. When is enough? Enough. It happened to Frank Vetro on a small level, and my life was destroyed, and I uncovered it. Read the book, frankvetro.com. Standing on principle, it outlines exactly how they operate. They run you into the ground. They label you crazy. And they get an extremely one-sided story out there. They don't tell the story about the other side. They cover it up. They're all in bed with each other. They're doing favors for each other. It's 100% fact. 100% fact. Donald Trump just brought it out. I brought it out on a small level. Wrote all about it and detailed the pattern and exactly how they do it. And Donald Trump, through his campaign, has exposed it at the highest level. You could now, if you want it to continue, then hey, vote for Hillary. But there's no way you're going to find anything that she accomplished. And any reason in her 30 years of office, whatever she's done, her decades in office, as the media said, I don't know what the hell she's done. If you look at her actual accomplishments, 
as they're compiled, it says she monitored this. She spearheaded this. She spoke out against this. These are all resume words. And the list will go on. 50, 60, 70 things. But there's resume words. Initiated this. But what was the outcome? It's impressive for a resume. But what did she really do after the fluff? See, after you put together a, a pretty impressive resume, somebody interviews you. Oh, this looks pretty good. I don't know if it's good, but it, look at this nice resume. This seems to be very qualified. Then you get interviewed. See, then you get interviewed, though. Then you get respectfully called out during your interview for what you said you did. You monitor this. You monitored in the Situation Room when you decided to kill Bill, you know, Osama Bin Laden. Oh, really? So now you get called in to the interview, though. Now you get called out on what you actually monitored and what you spearheaded. What was the results of what you spearheaded? What precisely did you do in that Situation Room besides monitor? Did you do more than monitor? Did you have a decision? Did you have input? Did you make the call to do it? What did you do? Was there a successful, what, was whatever you spearheaded successful? What was the end result? See, her resume is nothing but fluff. It is nothing but smoke and mirrors. She has not accomplished anything. The only thing she did was marry the governor of Arkansas, future president of the United States. That's it. And commit misconduct and fraud and steal money. Pay to play. Wiped her server. Responsible for the deaths of uh, uh, of military personnel. You name it. That's what she's accomplished. Negative things. Her resume is filled with nothing but power words. What you call power words for a resume. And fluff. But if you look beyond the power words, it amounts to nothing. Zero. Well, what has Donald Trump done? What has he done? He is a successful businessman. What it relates to politics, I don't know. All right, let's just pretend. Who knows? But what he's accomplished is tangible. You could walk into Trump Tower. He became a global figure, not just national. When he took over the develop, you know, uh, real estate development in, in Manhattan, only the most famous city in the world, he took it over. Good luck making it in Manhattan as a real estate developer. He expanded into a global initiative. He's known worldwide. Other Can anybody else name any other real estate developers? I'm sure some of you are savvy out there. You can name two or three maybe. You know how many there are? You know Donald Trump. That's it basically. There's a reason. What he did was tangible. He did this. You could walk into his buildings. You could play on his golf courses. He did something. Any little thing that he did, at least he did something. Hillary has done nothing. All right. More on this on Wednesday when I'm back on air. I won't be on for standing on principle. Uh, my buddy Phil Giacino is will be without me tomorrow. I'm going to, to uh, St. John's University um, right here in New York. To um, I'm going to a... Uh, an event on prosecutorial misconduct and wrongful convictions. So I'm going to attend that event. I would love to, hopefully I'll get a chance to speak at it. We'll see what happens, but I won't be able to make tomorrow's show standing on principle at eight o'clock, but you know, Phil Decino is going to have a good show queued up for you. Eight o'clock staying on principle, more politics, more, uh, Hey, somebody's got to stick up for Donald Trump, right? So you'll, you'll hear that tomorrow night, followed by uh, the right perspective with Phil Decino again. And my man, Ed, from Atlanta, Ed Vilbig. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching the Frank Retro Show right here on WLINY. I'll be back on Wednesday. If you want to contact me, catch me on Twitter at Frank Vetro. Go to my website, frankvetro.com to learn more about me, my book, or just tell me what you hate about me or love about me or what you want me to talk about. Keep it coming, everybody. Thanks for watching the Frank Vetro Show. Thanks for hopping on the V train. The next stop is Justice, and I am taking you there. Have a good night, everybody.
But that's